This is my ASMR voice. Would you like me to do an entire video in my ASMR voice? It won't be this video, but I could be persuaded if I get enough requests for it. The problem is, it would probably be a very long video, because for it to be ASMR, I would need to speak more slowly. Also, I would need to choose new opening music, because it would ruin the ASMR effect as soon as you hear Greetings one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. Bargain bag time is once again upon us. Can you believe it? Yes, it is already time for the July? No, August edition. Actually, it's the holy crap, I can't believe it's August edition of Bargain Bag. My monthly hunt for buried audio treasures in the form of two mystery CD grab bags from the late Skips Records and CD World, preceded by a wrap-up of what I found in last month's pair of bargain bags, and in between opening the two new bargain bags, I will talk about a CD that I have found, or that you might be likely to find, in the bargain CD section of a retailer near you, whether it's the Goodwill store or a record store or wherever. You never know where you're going to find good bargains in the CD section. So, anyway, without further ado, let's check out what I found in last month's bargain bags. Oh, by the way, uh, with the cast-off CDs that I'm about to show you, the ones I don't want to keep, I keep them for about two weeks uh, after the upload, upload date of this video, and if any of them sound good to you, uh, good enough that you want to uh, have them in your collection, let me know and I'd be happy to send them to you. Uh, if you want three or fewer CDs and you live in the States, uh, shipping is on me. I'll pay for shipping, but if you want uh, more than three CDs or if you live outside the country, uh, I'm going to have to charge you for, for postage because, well, postage is kind of uh, ridiculous now, isn't it? But anyway, yeah, if you want any of these CDs, let me know, and we can make arrangements in a direct message on Twitter or in the comments section below. So, I've uh, got a couple of singles in the CD lot last month. Uh, first of all, Sheryl Crow. Uh, I'm a big Sheryl Crow fan. I've, I've got, I think, all of her studio albums. But uh, all these songs on this album are from her Tuesday Night Music Club album. Yes. Uh, I mean, well, a radio version and a remix of two of the tracks, but yeah, not different enough for me to want to hang on to this. So... I like Cheryl Crow. Good stuff on the CD. It's just, it would be redundant in my collection, so into the cast offs it goes. So if you're a Cheryl Crow completist, the CD is up for grabs. And on the opposite end of the enjoyability spectrum, a song called Be Free. It's by a group called Live Element, and this is a seven track um, remix CD. And even just the radio edit of the song is ridiculously boring. It's got one of those, you know, dance club droney kind of beats to it, and the lyrics are almost non-existent. It's like the same phrase repeated over and over again. So, yeah, I was done by uh, the end of track two, and so, yeah. And then we have um, a classical compilation CD by the Maxos label, Ten Years of Success, commemorating their 10th anniversary. Uh, this is classical music. It's a classical compilation. It was sealed in cell its cellophane still when I uh, unearthed it from the bargain bag, and as you can see, it is still sealed. So because just it's a regular classical music compilation, I've probably got most, if not all, of these compositions on uh, various classical CDs in my collection, so I didn't feel the need to listen to it. Uh, we have Conrad Cummings, or the Conrad Cummings Ensemble, and this is contemporary classical mixed with some opera stuff, opera-style vocals. Yeah, just not really my thing. I mean, I, I like the original traditional classical music, but this uh, opera is has just never really floated my boat. Uh, I, I just don't know what it is about opera. But and yeah, this is contemporary stuff, so it's you know stuff that I'm unfamiliar with. So still, yeah, just uh, perfectly okay. As is pretty much all these CDs, just not my thing. I will try and say that just this once instead of repeating it over and over again in the video. But yeah. And then we have, this is the one I'm kind of most disappointed in, because the name of the band was great. Greasy Beans is the name of the band. And this was uh, country music, but very, very twangy, uh, almost bluegrass and what some people like to disparagingly call hillbilly-style country music. Yes, it's, it's very, very country. Real Life Music is the name of the album, although it is not a live album. So, meh, you know. And we have another country CD, but this was more along the pop lines of country. Uh, Chasing Jane was the name of the band, uh, and uh, 
Unraveled is the name of this of the album. Uh, this, uh, female vocals. It's actually, I think, a vocal female duo. Yeah, a female duo duo here. So uh, if you kind of like, you know, I don't know, the band Perry or Lady Antebellum when they are fr when uh, a, they have female vocals in in the front of them. You know, popish country. If you like it. And then we have uh, one of the very few artists, in fact, possibly the only artist in here that I have heard of before, although I'm probably going to mispronounce his name, Ruben Blades. This is very much um, <laughs> what I think of as Mexican polka music. You know, the stuff with the the horns and the accordion and that kind of stuff, just very, very, very Mexican. Uh, nothing wrong with that, as Seinfeld would say. Hey, if it's your thing, traditional Mexican pop, I guess is what it would uh, be called in a nutshell. And then we have uh, the more pop rock kind of stuff. Uh, the Elevator Drops with their album Pop Bus. It's kind of a play on the Sub Pop um, record label logo. That's I, I realized that after I looked at it the first time. Uh, rock, post-grunge rock basically is what it is. Yeah. Nothing really remarkable. As I've mentioned before, uh, music, I listen to so much music, especially with these bargain bag uh, CDs, that something has to be really unique, really ear grabbing for me to really glom onto it. So a lot of this stuff, sad to say, is just going to fall by the wayside and not interest me in, in the end. Then we have a jazz group called Equinox with their album Humboldt Time. A very good jazz. It's, it's uh, you know, well-known compositions, but they kind of uh, noodle around the basic melody. So it's they improv a lot over the basic composition. That's what I'm trying to say. So uh, this album does score points because it has a favorite song of mine, a favorite Doris Day song called Secret Love. They do a rendition of that. And uh, On Green Dolphin Street, which I'm sure is a well-known uh, song. I don't know who uh, who originally did it. A Nightingale sang in Berkeley Square and Night and Day are also on this album. So uh, if you like the slightly improv jazz uh, stuff with, you know, classic American standard jazz songs, this may be worth uh, worth your time. And then we have a New Age slash jazz fusion kind of thing. I actually expected this to be a singer-songwriter pop rock cheesy kind of stuff, but it was actually instrumental. I did go through a New Age phase when I was, you know, in my late teens back in the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, but this, you know, if I had heard it back in the day, it might still be a favorite of mine, as is the case with some New Age stuff. I just, I liked it so much that I've kept it, and it's it doesn't sound old, but this, since I'd never heard it before, it sounds good. Just all those, all those synths kind of date it, you know. And then we have, oh, this is the other band that I had heard of before, a band called James. Uh, they did a hit, uh, their biggest hit was a song called Laid back in the uh, early 90s, late 80s, early 90s. This is the album after the album that uh, Laid was on. Actually, I think the album was called Laid in the album question. So this is two albums after that. You know, Britpop flavored rock, basically stuff. Uh, but although number, uh, track number eight, Avalanche, sounds a lot like U2. It kind of sounds like the U2 song that U2 never recorded. Uh, Forgotten Soul, uh, spelled S-O-L, and this is a uh, R&B group. Uh, not bad. Uh, it's just, you know, as with the other things, it just doesn't quite grab my ear enough. But uh, some good stuff on here. The, the vocals are, are very good, actually. But these last two albums I am keeping. Uh, yeah, just two out of 14 this month. So, yeah, kind of a low average. Better than none at all, though, because I mean there have been a couple months in Bargain Bag where I've wanted to keep nothing that I found in the bags. So, yeah. Better than nothing. But yeah, this first of the two here is a, uh, I was about to say a Denmarkian. No, it's a yeah, Danish, not Denmarkian, but Danish band called Wolfkin. And the album is called Brand New Pants. And uh, that, that of course, caught my eyes. There's kind of a, a quirky, whimsical album title. And that kind of reflects uh, the band's sound, basically. it's They're kind of fun, kind of quirky, and yeah, whimsical, as I said. Uh, the album, and so in that respect, they kind of remind me a little bit of Bare Naked Ladies. You said kind of fun, so, and maybe a little bit of They Might Be Giants. But uh, yeah, some good stuff. And in some songs, they use some synths. Uh, in other songs, they don't. So yeah, it's, it's got, you know, in that respect, it's, some of the songs have a little bit of an 80s feel to them. But yeah, kind of fun album. I am definitely going to listen to this a few more times just to see if it... Uh, if it's a keeper, if it sticks with me, if it's uh, if it's shelf life, as they say, is uh, uh, of any length. So, but yeah. And then the final album that I am keeping is by the Sweatshop Band. It is called Velvet Touch, and uh, this is it. This one's kind of interesting. It's got a several in different influences uh, peppered throughout the album. Here and there, there you'll hear some ska 
influences, maybe a little bit of reggae, some traces of uh, Cajun or Zydeco music here and there. So yeah, it kind of bounces around to a couple of different genres. And it's got a couple of, uh, there's one song on here called Spy Monkey, and that's basically what it is. It's kind of a, uh, a whimsical song. Reminds me of Walk the Dinosaur by Was Not Was, if any of you are familiar with that song. Just a silly little song about a monkey who is a spy. It's one of those really heady songs, you know. Uh, but it's also got a song called W, which, uh, as you know, those of you who might be uh, politically minded and know what the term W uh, evokes, it does have some sound bites throughout the song of George W. Bush back when he was the um, worst president we had ever had. That's changed now. But anyway, uh, yeah, a fun album, and I'm this is one I'm definitely going to have fun uh, re-listening to. I've only listened to it uh, one and a half times so far. So yeah, I'm definitely going to do it. Uh, check this one out in more depth, and uh, this one might be another one that I'm going to hang on to for quite a while. So a decent selection of albums. You know, I'm only, ke only keeping two out of 14, but hey, not a bad haul for the paltry amount of money I spent on those CDs. So anyway, let's dig into the first of the two mystery CD grab bags for the month of August. I still cannot believe it's August. It's weird, isn't it? Anyway, so give you the customary peekaboo. I'll do it like this so you can actually see what CDs are in here. So, before I have a chance to look at them, let's see what's in here. Oh, Alan Jackson, a uh, fairly popular country singer. Uh, the Greatest Hits collection. So hey, I'll be able to Take a good little sampling of Alan Jackson, uh, to whom I have never listened really before. So it's got quite a few songs on there. Check out that track list. I like looking at CD and LP cover art because you don't get this kind of a layout, the design element of it, when you're calling up albums on Spotify or whatever, or iTunes. You get this, to see the fun stuff that they do with the cover art. I just like it. I kind of like that design aspect. What kind of, I've talked about it before. And then, oh, another greatest hits, Share. If I could turn back time, the greatest hits. And this one will probably be a cast off because I have most of these songs, it looks like. And uh, yeah, actually, I think I have a greatest hits collection of hers, a different greatest hits collection. Uh, so, so yeah, this one will probably be ca a cast off, but uh, you can't go wrong with share, right? So this looks like it might be the greatest hits bag. I don't know. And we have hmm, Swan Boogie Queen. So no, it is not the greatest hits bag. Uh, Ill-gotten booty is the name of the album. <laughs> it's not the it's not ill-gotten booty snatches. Don't worry. Uh, but yeah, this I'm kind of uh, assuming it's going to be swamp boogie queen. It's probably going to have some uh, Cajun influences, possibly. Or uh, swamp rock is some one subgenre that. Uh, oh, now I can't remember who it was that was good at swamp rock. But uh, yeah. uh, maybe I'm kind of expecting to hear maybe a little ZZ Top. In there. Not that they were necessarily a swamp rock band. Anyway. And then, oh, another artist that I have heard of before. This is, yeah, three out of four that I've actually heard of. Lil' Kim. Uh, her album, The Notorious K.I.M. So, yeah, I think she is... Is she more hip-hop or is she more R&B? If she's more hip-hop, I'm not going to be caring too much for this, but I will give it a listen. I'll give it the good call, the old college try, as they say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some uh, stuff that I've actually heard of in this bag, which is not typical. And we have... Gary Stadler with Fairy of the Woods. This looks like um, uh, acoustic, possibly new agey type of uh, instrumental music, I'm guessing. That's... Then we have, oh, Steve Warner. That's another artist that I've heard of. I don't think I've ever listened to any of his, any of his music actively. But uh, yeah, Burden the Roadhouse Down. So I think he is country, if I recall correctly. So, oh yeah, I do it with Garth Brooks. The, the title track is a duet with Garth Brooks. So, yeah. I have a couple of country albums in here to listen to. And this one feels like a single or possibly... No, just a... Uh, yeah, the last one in this bag is Libby Johnson with her album Annabella. Never heard of her. So it will be interesting to see what is uh, what type of music this is. So yeah, there we go. Okay, taking a break between the opening of the two mystery CD grab bags, let me introduce you to the Spotlight album, or the Bargain CD, that I will be talking about today. Very much worth your money if you ever happen upon it in a bargain bin anywhere, as are all the CDs that I talk about as the Spotlight albums in these bargain bag videos each month. 
The one in question for this month is the self-titled debut album by Owsley. Now, Will Owsley is probably a name that you're not going to recognize, but he was one of the hardest working unsung heroes of music back in his day. Uh, back in the early 90s, he formed a short-lived band called The Semantics with guitarist producer Millard Powers, who has worked with Ben Folds and Counting Crows, amongst others, and Zach Starkey, who is the son of Beatles drummer Ringo Starr. Uh, they only released one album before they broke up, went their separate ways. And uh, Will Owsley, after that, worked as a touring guitarist for Amy Grant for 16 years. And he also toured and did session work with a whole bunch of different artists. Shania Twain, Michael McDonald, Vanessa Williams, Vince Gill, Kenny Loggins, uh, Miley Cyrus and the Jonas Brothers in their early Disney years. And the list goes on. I mean, he was, as I said, he was one of the hardest working people in show business, uh, with uh, apologies to James Brown. Uh, and Will Owsley, on top of that, was also a songwriter and producer. But he also released two studio solo albums. Uh, this was the first, his self-titled album. It was recorded in his home studio all by himself, and it was funded mostly by his touring work with Amy Grant. Now, this album is basically a perfect example of a rock subgenre that isn't talked about very much anymore, you don't hear a lot of, of about anymore, and that's called power pop. And basically what power pop is, is kind of a garage rock or indie rock variation, you know, with the crunchy guitars and all that stuff, but with uh, usually more upbeat songs than ballads and slightly more pop sounding arrangements, uh, hence the reason why it's called power pop, as well as uh, a bit more of a polished production sound. And power pop generally has some Britpop influences, uh, both classic Britpop like the Beatles and more recent Britpop like Oasis. And also it has at sometimes at some of its more synthier moments, some uh, 80s influences, 80s new wave influences like the Cars. So that, that kind of stuff is basically what it is. And another characteristic of power pop is usually lots and lots of hooks in the songs. And this album has a bunch of hooks in it. If you like hooky songs, check out this album. And as I kind of hinted at a minute ago, this album has mostly upbeat songs, uh, a handful of mid-tempo tracks, uh, but not really any ballads at all. Uh, so it is, you know, generally sound in sounding, it's more upbeat, more energetic. Uh, it opens with two fantastic, energetic earworms. Uh, track one is called Oh No, The Radio, which, as the title kind of suggests, is a song about music, music that you hear on the radio. And you know how much I love songs about music, so that one's right up my alley. And uh, track two is called I'm All Right, and that just kind of has the... the uh, the verses are more mid-tempo, but uh, when the chorus hits, it's just that classic power pop stuff. Just kind of hits you with a wall of those crunchy guitars. Just kind of kicks into, shifts into a high gear at the chorus. So that's just great. And then uh, the two tracks right after that are a bit more mid-tempo. Coming Up Roses and Good Old Days. Those are just excellent mid-tempo songs. Just fantastic. And later on the, in the album, you have a standout track called Zavolo House which is about a haunted house in the neighborhood that uh, Will Owsley grew up in, uh, presumably anyway. So if you like to do uh, playlists for holidays like Halloween, Zavolo House would fit right in there for a Halloween mix. It's just fantastic. And uh, right after that song, Zavolo House, is another song called Sunny Boy, which is another high-energy hooky song. I mean, you know, I've, I've talked about half the tracks in the album, and I can't say enough about this. It's just amazing. Uh, two of the tracks, Coming Up Roses and The Sky Is Falling, are actually re-recordings of songs that appeared on the Semantics album Power Bill, their one and only album. But yes, uh, as I said before, this is an absolutely textbook example of the power pop subgenre, and a distillation of everything that is good about it. I mean, you've got to listen to this album. It's on Spotify. It appears to be on Spotify. I looked online. So go listen to it, honestly. You, you cannot go wrong with this album. Uh, it was actually nominated not necessarily for songwriting or instrumentation. It was nominated for a Grammy for Best Engineered Album, non-classical. So that's great. And uh, he put out one other album called The Hard Way. But unfortunately, back in 2010, Owsley passed away. And so he's been gone for about 10 years now. Uh, but the year after his death, uh, the Vince, uh, there's a Vince Gill song that he co-wrote called Threaten Me With Heaven, and that, that actually got nominated for a Grammy for Best Country Song and an ACM Award for Song of the Year. So, you know, Owsley, not only was he, as you'll, as you'll hear on this album, a great uh, recording artist himself in his own right, but he knew his songwriting and producing. Uh, he was just great at that, too. So, honestly, uh, I... A friend of mine, one of my longtime friends, and I discovered this album at the same time, and I also introduced this album recently to uh, my other 
closest friend in the whole world, and he absolutely loved it as well. So, you know, if that's not a seal of approval for two good friends of mine, then I don't know what is. But yeah, as I said, this is on Spotify. Owsley, self-titled album. You've got to go listen to it. It is fantastic. I don't think you'll regret it at all. Okay, I hope I brought across my enthusiasm for that album because I just absolutely love it. It's one of my all-time favorites. I've owned it for almost 20 years, and it's just fantastic. I, I love it. And I was so sad when Owsley passed away because we only got those precious two solo albums out of him. Uh, his second one is almost just is almost as good as his, as his first one. So. Anyway, uh, enough with my love fest of Owsley. Let's go on with the second of the two mystery CD grab bags for the month of holy crap I can't believe it's August. Peekaboo IC CDs. And then let's orient the bag in the proper way so that I am well oh, actually they're both they're facing different directions here so I'll have to flip some of them over. Anyway, oh <laughs> this is one actually that was in my sister's collection. The soundtrack from Mr. Holland's Opus. So this one is going right in the uh, cast off section, I think. I think I still have that. Maybe it was. Maybe I got rid of it because it had some redund too many redundant songs on it. I can't remember. I'll have to look. You'll know next month if it's in my cast-offs or not. Let's put it that way. But yeah. Spencer Davis Group, Stevie Wonder, John Lennon, Jackson Brown, Ray Charles. Very, very good soundtrack to a... a actually, I haven't seen the movie yet. Apparently, my sister loved the movie enough to buy the soundtrack. So. And then we have All the Saints. Apparently, their self-titled album. I assume it's an album because there is no track listing on the back. Frankly, that's always been a pet peeve of mine is when they don't do the track listing on the back of a CD. So yeah, it looks like it's got about 10 or 11 songs on it. I have no idea who they are, so I will listen to them. Then we have Felonius Bosch with the, song, with the album New Dark Ages. This looks like it might be... I have no idea what it might be. <laughs> I could only venture to guess at the obs the obscure imagery on the album cover and all that stuff. I have no idea. Then we have oh another soundtrack, My Best Friend's Wedding, another uh, another movie that I have never seen. Diana King, Annie Annie DeFranco, Jan Arden, Jackie DeShannon, Mary Chapin Carpenter, Tony Bennett, Amanda Marshall. So yeah. then we have ooh. I was kind of hoping I'd see the CD eventually. It's a band called Stir, and I will be talking about that their sophomore album at some point because it's one that I've hung on to for a long, long time and really, really enjoy. I picked this one up earlier and was not uh, enamored of it. I just, it, it didn't strike me as their sophomore album did, so I eventually got rid of it. But I've always wanted to uh, give it another try, and now I've got the opportunity. So yeah, Stir is a, it's a rock band that, uh, as I said, I will probably be talking about them. I'm thinking they might be in my A to Z next year. Details to come on that. And then we have... Is it IZIT, I think is the name of the band, because the, uh, the price sticker is covering up the band name on the cover. And uh, The Whole Affair is the name of the album. So. Yet another artist that I am completely unfamiliar with. Although as far as, you know, albums that I, or artists that I'm familiar with and stuff, uh, this has been pretty much a 50-50 average, much better than the regular bargain bag. Then we have Ajax and the album Aphrodite, or Aphrodite with their album Ajax. I'm not sure which is which, but yeah. actually it is a five-song EP, so we'll check it out. And that is the last of the two mystery CD grab bags. So yes, that'll do it for Bargain Bag for the month of August 2020. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.